What is up guys? Welcome to the annual CB Media FAQ video. This year we're doing things a little bit different because I also have a major life update. I'll put it to you this way. Welcome to my new condo here in Cebu, Philippines. Yes, I've officially moved out of my beautiful condo in John Tiam Beach, Thailand, and it was definitely bittersweet because, well, it really felt like home to me at this point, and I thought I was gonna be living in that condo for years to come. But with a major construction project going on on John Tian Beach, which is expected to last 18 to 24 months, then building a hotel in front of my condo, resulting in construction noise, 12 hours a day and my landlord jacking the rent of my condo from 18,000 baht a month to 26,000 baht a month. Well, it was officially time for me to move on. And I'm taking this opportunity to do some traveling while I don't have a long-term lease on a condo. We're gonna be giving a major, major life update, letting you know what my plans are for the rest of the year, and of course, answering your frequently asked questions that I get here on the CB Media YouTube channel. I think it's pretty obvious that if you're just a casual viewer of this channel, if you're just here for the car shows, the drag racing, the burnouts, and the pretty girls, maybe you should skip this video. This video is obviously for my hardcore supporters and people that want to know what's going on in my personal life. But by the way, if you do skip this video, you should feel bad about it. I'm just saying. Also, make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving you a coupon code for a flash sale to get 50% off CB Media Apparel. And I'm also going to tell you about my new YouTube channel. It's a live streaming channel. So, What's going on? Well, I'm here in Cebu, Philippines. I'm gonna be here in the Philippines for a month. I'm gonna attend some car shows. I'm gonna check out some custom jeepneys. Uh, yeah, I'm super, super excited. For the first time in years, I don't actually have a full-time lease, like a long-term lease on a condo. And like I said, I'm gonna take this opportunity while I'm not paying rent back in Thailand to do some traveling. So first up, Philippines for one month, and then I'm actually gonna be returning to Thailand because there's a couple big shows that I want to attend, uh, including the Bangkok Hot Rod Show, which is one of my favorite car events. And Cream Pie, my BMW E30, will actually be on display in the European section of the Bangkok Hot Rod Show, so I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna return to Thailand and get a short-term lease there for one month. And then after that, I'm actually headed to Europe. I'm going to Poland for Ult Race, which is a massive car event that happens in Warcaw, Poland once a year. It's a huge deal. It's actually such a big deal that Liberty Walk is sending their Countach, the Liberty Walk Countach that was just uh, revealed at the Tokyo Auto Salon, they're putting that in a container and shipping it to Poland for this event. It's a big, big deal. And then of course, while I'm in Poland, I'm gonna stay there one month, get a monthly rental off Airbnb or something. And then I also really want to go drive the Nürburgring. Driving the Nürburgring has been something that's been on my bucket list do you hear that? Somebody was outside my condo just totally sending it on a two-stroke motorbike. I'm sure that pissed a lot of people off, me personally. Uh, I like the sound of two-stroke motorbikes. Yeah, so uh, do, definitely doing some traveling after spending a month in Europe. At that point, I'm going to make a decision. I might possibly go to Japan for a month or at that point, return back to Thailand. I do want to get back to Thailand before the high season because I, I need to re-sign a lease on a condo. And pro tip, if you're moving to Thailand and you want to get a really, really good deal on a condo, make sure you get there around June, July, August to try to look for a condo because during that time, landlords are a lot more desperate to sign a long-term lease on a condo because it's in the middle of the monsoon season. There's less people there looking for condos. So my plan is to be back in Thailand, like probably July or August, and then re-sign another long-term lease. I'm not really actually sure where yet. Uh, it's most likely probably gonna be either the Pattaya area or Bangkok. Simply, I want to live on the beach, but I also, it is mandatory for me to be near Bangkok because I'm going to Bangkok so often for car shows. I'm really, really enjoying the beach life. It's way more calm, it's way more chill. I'm happier 
by the sea. I'm happier by the beach. I'm happier with a more chilled environment. But I must be within a two-hour drive of Bangkok. So that rules out Phuket, Koh Samui, Koh Chang, uh, Krabi, and many other beautiful beaches in Thailand that I personally would love to live on. But it just doesn't make sense as a car guy who goes to Bangkok almost every weekend. FAQ 1, and probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I get on this channel, is simply, Chad, what is up with the motorbike tours? Why do you not do motorbike tours anymore? You know, a lot of people say those videos are their personal favorite videos that I've ever done on this channel, and I'm gonna be honest with you, they're some of my personal favorite videos that I've ever filmed, and I go back to this day and watch some of those videos still. Just remembering the epic times I had on a tiny little 150cc scooter ripping around northern Thailand and Isan, and I absolutely love those videos. And I'm serious when I say this, some of the best times of my life was riding a tiny motorbike around northern Thailand making YouTube videos. So why don't I do it anymore? And well, it's simple. That experience is no longer possible. I recently, when I bought my X-Max, uh, for those that don't know, I have a pretty pimped out Yamaha X-Max 300. It's painted Lamborghini gray. It has old lens and an acropovic exhaust and custom mirrors and it's lower and all this stuff. When I bought that motorbike, I did a test. I shipped it. I bought it in Bangkok and I shipped it down to Southern Phuket. I flew down to Phuket and I actually did a motorbike tour. I just didn't film it. It was just a test to see if I wanted to pick that type of content up again. And I rode that motorbike from the southern tip of Phuket in Rawai, across Phuket, through Peng Na, into Krabi, up to Surat Thani, and over to Koh Samui. And I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't the same at all. It was not just a terrible experience, it was a terrifying experience. Thailand, post the situation, uh, all the traffic is back. All the guys in the delivery trucks who drive like total maniacs that are willing to kill themselves, their families, and you just to get somewhere two minutes earlier are back on the road driving like total maniacs, passing on blind corners, passing on hills, getting way too close for comfort for my personal, like, I, I like, I value my life. I have a fantastic life that I'm very proud of that, you know, I enjoy my life and I just don't want to die. You know, during those times where I was making those motorbike tours, it was, uh, again, in the middle of the situation and um, it was just different. It was so different because there was hardly anyone on the roads and it was such an, it, it was a very special time and that experience could have only happened during that time. By the way, another FAQ that's not on my list is why do you call it the situation? I don't know if this is still the thing or not, but if you said the word COVID, your videos would get demonetized. So I used to say when this situation first came about, I would call it the beer virus. It didn't work. They started demonetizing videos when you said the word virus. So I just started saying the situation and it kind of stuck and it became like a meme on the channel or whatever. You can't replicate that experience. You can't replicate the, uh, the enthusiasm and the joy I had in those videos today because the experience is just nowhere near the same. I truly miss those videos and they were a very special time in my life and I'm very, very proud of that content. Still to this day, I think they're some of the best videos I ever made, but unfortunately, I can't replicate them now because the experience is not the same as it was back then during the situation. Next frequently asked question, will I ever move back to the US? This is a question that I get all the time. People go, are you just going to live in Thailand and Southeast Asia forever? And I don't know. I, I really, I truly can't answer that question. I know right now with the political environment, the toxicity, the culture, the inflation, and 
the crime and many other problems that the United States is currently having. I don't currently see myself moving back to the US full time. I truly, I tell people this all the time, it's a bad deal. It's just a bad business deal. I don't even go back to visit that often, but when I do go back and I kind of, as soon as I get back to the US, I feel like the tension in the air and it's, it's just not healthy. Yeah, I don't see myself moving back to the US anytime soon. That might change, I don't know. But currently, the answer to that question is, nah, I'm good. I'm happy where I am. Next question is what is up with the CB1 Tech channel? It was doing so well, 40 plus thousand subscribers and millions of views in just a few months. And then poof, you kind of just disappeared with the one takes. What is going on? And actually I explained this perfectly on my Patreon. So I'm just gonna let myself from a few weeks ago explain that to you guys. Channel. This is why I originally started the CB1 Tech channel. And the reason I went quiet on that channel is because my main channel, which has 670,000 subscribers, was kind of dying a slow death. Every time I posted a video, I would get less and less views and would perform worse and worse. And the reason for this was lack of consistency because I was focusing, I, I just, I'm one human being, I can't post a weekly video and then continue to shoot CB1 takes. I can't do both. So the way I attempted to fix this consistency issue on the main CB media channel was to move the one takes over to the main channel. But this caused a problem as well. And the problem this caused was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have subscribed to CB media to consume a certain type of content. High quality, high production, unique content. And then when they click on a video that has no editing and it's not necessarily the most exciting, engaging content and then they leave that video and they do that multiple times, the algorithm says, oh, this guy's videos, these CB media videos aren't as good as they used to be. And the algorithm stops recommending my videos to existing subscribers and new viewers. So while the one takes allowed me to be consistent on the CB media channel, it really fucked up my audience retention rate, which hurt my channel in a different way. So it was damned if you do, damned if you don't. So my way of resolving that was just to go back into balls to the wall, shooting, editing, and posting a very high quality video every single week on the CB channel. I, I just couldn't focus on the one takes anymore. I didn't have time for them. Do want to eventually revisit the whole CB one take thing because I think it's a fantastic idea and it's a great concept. I just don't know how to go about that. By the way, if you wanna support what I'm doing further, get more discounts on merchandise, access to CB media meetups, and extra content, make sure to join my Patreon. The link is in the video description. Speaking of that, another FAQ that I get all the time is, bro, how do I contact you? I've DM'd you, I've messaged you, I've done this, I've done that, and I can't get in touch with you. Listen guys, let me explain something. I actually spend as little time on the internet as possible. What I personally enjoy doing is going out someplace, having a drink, people watching, going for a drive in my car, riding my motorbike. I try my best to spend as little time on my phone as humanly possible. Also, you should see the DMs I get on Instagram. Bro, it is chaos. It's people, you know, hey dude, I'm coming to Pattaya, Thailand and I need a hotel under $15 a night. Can you give me a recommendation? Bro, check a go to. People like going, hey, I need a left front fender for an Isuzu D-Max. Can you send me one to New Zealand? Begging for like Thai car models, Instagram accounts. Bro, my DMs are just, it's a shit show. And every time I go in there, it just annoys the hell out of me because of the stupid questions I get. If you truly need to contact me, you can email me if it's business related, or if you just wanna chat, again, you can contact me through my Patreon. I check my Patreon messages every single day. The link is in the video description. Next question, why do I not have a girlfriend? Why am I not in a committed long-term relationship? And this is a question I get all the time. And you know, people are like, how are you over there with all those beautiful girls and you don't have a girlfriend? And my reply to this is, I'm over here with all these beautiful girls. 
why would I have a girlfriend? It just doesn't make sense to me. You could say I have commitment issues. And also, the way my lifestyle is set up, I just told you guys, I was in Thailand, now I'm in the Philippines, and then I'm going back to Thailand, then I'm going to Poland, then I'm going to Germany, then I'm going to Japan. My lifestyle just wouldn't work well with a long-term relationship. If I had a girlfriend, I would have to bring her with me to go traveling, and that's like extra expenses. I'm sure there would be drama out of that. Like, it just... I don't know. I just am currently enjoying my life and my freedom as a single guy. I, I just, I don't think my life would be better if I had a long-term relationship. Now, maybe one day I will meet a girl and that will change. But for now, I'm very happy and very content being single. Next question, how is life as a YouTuber going? I will say this, I'm currently happier than I've been in a very, very long time. The way my channel is set up, I'm very content. You know, for years I was getting to the point where I was just like burnt out trying to push out as much content as possible. And I'm at the point now where my channel is, I wouldn't say it's on autopilot because I still work a lot. You know, editing the videos that I make a lot of times take 20, 30, even 40 hours sometimes. Like my recent video of the Connection Thailand Under Up video, I probably had 35 to 38 hours into editing that video. And it's a lot of work, but it's something that I truly love doing. Like I love video editing. I love creating content. The only thing that I struggle when it comes to creating the content is one, the heat. In Thailand, like especially the video that I made that was the off-road uh, eighth mile dirt racing video with all the diesel trucks with the Nissan hard bodies and the Zuzu D-Maxes. That video, like I got to that event around 11 a.m. And it was, not joking, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and it was just brutally hot with no shade, like just the sun beating the crap out of you all day. I, I am so dedicated to get the shots that I need. I never take a break to eat. I never, I rarely take a break to even drink water or to rest because I'm so terrified that I'll miss a shot. Like at that event around 3 p.m., I went and sat in my rental car and chugged a bottle of water finally. And like things started to go black. Like I started seeing like, like black patches everywhere and stuff. And I generally thought I was going to pass out. So sometimes, especially this time of year in Thailand with the heat, creating the content's a struggle. It really is. Uh, you know, it just, it beats the hell out of you being out in that heat, in that sun all day. But besides that, um, the channel, <laughs> I said besides that, like almost passing out making a video isn't a big deal. But besides that, the channel is going great. I'm very happy. I'm very content. Um, the big news is a lot of you guys saw that I had a massive sponsor come in, VinFast, the Vietnamese automotive manufacturer. And they pretty much sponsored my YouTube channel and my Instagram for an entire year, which is taking a ton of pressure off of me financially because I spend a lot of money Money to make my videos. And, you know, I have a full-time uh, Thai employee that I pay. You know, I pay videographers. I literally spend thousands of dollars a month to create content for this channel. And then fast coming in and sponsoring my YouTube channel and my Instagram pretty much for the entirety of 2024, just took a lot of financial pressure off of me. So I'm very comfortable and very happy and very content with the way the CB Media YouTube channel is going currently. But like I said, my next big project is the live streaming content. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you guys the link to my live streaming channel where you can just chat with me and we can talk about things. We can talk about cars, we can talk about travel, we can talk about Southeast Asia. And I'm gonna be doing at least three or four live streams a week for an hour to two hours just to chat with you guys. So make sure to check the link for my live streaming channel at the end of this video. Next question, what happened to Tyla Dega, my racetrack in Thailand? I answered this question in a video at one point, but I think a lot of people miss that. So I'm gonna explain it here. Tyla Dega, for those that don't know, was my racetrack in Thailand. It was a couple hours outside of Pattaya. And I rented this track from a friend of mine, a Thai guy who's very, very wealthy and owns a massive collection of exotic cars. And he essentially built this racetrack 
as his personal racetrack so he could have a place to drive his cars. He was getting older, like he's at that point, he was in his late 60s, selling off most of his car collection, and he really didn't use the track that much. So I was able to strike a deal with him where I could rent the track. And I ended up only having the track for like three or four months because what I didn't know was when it rained in Thailand, the irrigation system at that property was pretty much like non-existent. When it rained, that track flooded like really, really bad. There was like at least half of the corners in the track would be in water, I'm talking about like two feet deep of water. And the water wouldn't dissipate. And again, there was no irrigation system. So the water would just sit there. And after like a week or so, once the water did disappear, the track would be caked in mud. Like I would have to get out there with a shovel and literally like scrape mud off of the track. And it was like, bro, like why didn't you tell me that when it rained, this place flooded and then the water would just sit there for like a week. Like it totally screwed up so much of my shooting schedule. And it got to the point, I was like, dude, what can we do about this situation? We had a conversation and he goes, hey, you know, it's gonna be a few hundred thousand baht, but we can fix this. If you wanna pay for half and you know, I can pay for half, or if you just kinda wanna rip the contract up and walk away, that's fine as well. And that's what I ended up doing because the reality of the situation was that track was in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't a hotel or an enclosed restaurant within a 30 to 40 minute drive. The roads going out there weren't that great. Pretty much any time I was to bring a car to that track, it had to be brought in on a slide truck because again, it was in the middle of nowhere. The logistics of filming there was not something that was really easy. Also, this is very much a Thailand situation. Even though I was renting the track, he still had a bunch of cows at the track and the cows would walk onto the track. They would also shit on the track. I was honestly terrified of hitting one of dude's cows or being like Mario Kart and spinning out because you came around a corner and you hit a giant pile of bullshit. It was like bulls walking around on the track. It was a great idea and maybe one day I can revisit that facility, but I think to do it properly, you would have to build like a mini hotel at the track and have a way to have food. Again, it was like two hours east of Patia in the middle of nowhere. If you were to fix the irrigation issues, build a hotel and a restaurant, maybe then it would make sense. But man, it was a great idea, but yeah. Final question and hands down the most frequently asked question that I ever get on the CB Media YouTube channel is how do I find car events in Thailand? Listen, all of these events are organized in the Thai language, mostly through line groups. And me personally, I can't even find events in Thailand. The way I know about them at all is the organizers of these events know about me, know about the channel, and they want international coverage of their events. So they end up messaging me or calling me or something. They contact me somehow and let me know about the events that are happening in Thailand. And then what I do with that information is I post a monthly car event calendar, not just for Thailand, but all of Southeast Asia, because there's lots of car events that happen in Cambodia, Vietnam, and Philippines as well. I post a massive monthly car event calendar on my Patreon. If you want access to that event calendar, check the link in the video description. Use coupon code CB50 for 50% off the entire CB Media apparel line at CB Media on YouTube.com. The link is in the video description. This coupon code is only good for 24 hours from when this video is posted. Also, if you want to join the first CB live stream, you can subscribe to my live streaming channel right here. Thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in another more normal CB Media YouTube video very soon. Peace.